question four from section two of the 2017 Higher Physics Examination. Some motorways have variable speed limits, with overhead information boards displaying the maximum speed allowed. This system is designed to keep the traffic flowing and to avoid congestion. And this little part here is our task. It says, in this system, the flow of traffic is observed and the maximum speed to be displayed is determined using speed equals frequency times wavelength. Now, use your knowledge of physics to comment on this system for determining the maximum speed to be displayed. So, obviously, the traffic flow has been modelled on waves. And that could be your first statement. Because remember, we're just playing for three marks. We don't have to write an essay or a thesis on this. We just write down the things that come into our head, which are quite logical, which are related to physics and using our previous physics knowledge. So this model of traffic flowing must be based on waves because speed equals frequency times wavelength. That's the wave equation. So we can pose a series of couple of questions for ourselves then. How can I link traffic to the wave equation? How can I use the wave equation as a model for traffic? Then that leads me on to think about what kind of wave is best used in this model. So we're beginning to build up our, 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 our answer to this. What, I'm, what wave type I'm going to use? Is it going to be a transverse wave or is it going to be a longitudinal wave? Or could it be even an electromagnetic wave? These are things which we have to think about and put down in our argument. So if we're going to use the wave uh, theory for a model of traffic flow, then we may add, ask other questions. What would be the frequency of the traffic wave? How, how is that calculated? How do we work that out? What does it mean? What does it look like in real life, the frequency of a traffic wave? Other questions could be, what will be the wavelength of this traffic wave? If we're going to use traffic or the uh, as, as a, uh, we're going to use model of waves for traffic flow, then we have to be able to answer these questions or put some knowledge down. What will be the frequency of the traffic wave? What will be the wavelength of the traffic wave? Because if we find these out, we can put them all together and we can find the wave speed from the equation. Speed equals frequency times wavelength. So the first thing I'm going to put down then for this question is to say that we're going to use the wave model of a particular way we're going to choose, which we'll have to find out in a minute, to describe traffic flow and what's happening when traffic gets congested. So we have to think about that, and that's what we're going to do now. So to think about waves and traffic, let's think about this picture here, which we can easily jot down in our notebooks. We have a line of traffic of all cars, travelling with the same speed and, hopefully in this little model, the same distance apart. Now this could represent the particles in a wave. So we're getting there. Now, how does a wave happen in this situation? Well, let's think about the front of this stream of traffic, this flow of traffic. Let's imagine that the first three cars, for some reason, begin to change their speed and slow down. Now when they begin to slow down, this is what happens. They bunch up together. Think about it. One car slows down. The car next to it, coming behind it, sees it slowing down. But reaction time means it's still travelling along at a bigger speed. And therefore, the distance between the two cars is going to decrease until that person puts on the brakes. And the same for the third car behind. So we get this little bit of compression here, or as you say, congestion. So the car, first car slows down and the two other cars behind it, they slow down as well and they all bunch together. They make a compression. That should give us a clue of what wave we're going to be using. The rest of the cars come along and say the first two cars then, for whatever reason, they begin to move away again. So we're going to get this situation. The fourth car uh, behind the first bunch of cars has to slow down as well. And therefore, that will mean that the car behind that's got to do the same thing, slow down. So we're getting this repeated pattern here. And the third car behind it here has got to slow down as well. So this little bunch of congestion has now been transferred along the road to this position. And of course, these cars here see the cars ahead slowing down. So therefore, they're slowing down. But once again, the reaction time means they're going to come closer together before they can actually slow down and that's what we get here. So what we're getting is that the congestion, the, the coming together of the cars, is actually moving in the opposite direction to the flow. And there seems to be a compression. There seems to be a rarefaction, 
spreading out. This is the clue what we were going to use. Then a compression again, then a refraction, then a compression, and it's going to repeat all the way through it. So what we have here is really a kind of model of what we call a longitudinal wave. Now, if we could see that wave working, that's it there. Can you see that the compressions, that's when they all crush together, and the rarefactions, when they all spread out together, is really a longitudinal wave going in the opposite direction of the traffic flow. So if we model our traffic on a longitudinal wave, and that gives us a couple of, maybe one mark for even mentioning that, we're well on the way to find out what happens next. So you can see that we can work out the wavelength of these congestions by just looking uh, at what's happening in different parts of the road. We can work out the wavelength. We also can work out the frequency, which is really 1 divided by the period, the time it takes for one of these congestions to come and then go again and come and then go again. So what we have done then is we've worked out the frequency and we've worked out the wavelength and from that we can then go ahead and work out the speed of the wave. So we have this situation here, we have got the following, we have got uh, V, the speed of the the wave which is going from here all the way along there is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. And the frequency is going to be equal to 1 upon the period, and therefore it's going to be wavelength divided by the period. Now, what are these things then? Well, we can put down our physics and say that the wavelength is the distance between the compressions. That could be the distance between successive compressions. And that can be worked out from the cameras, which are on the stanchions above the roads. So that could be the distance between the congestion, if you want to think of it that way, congestion which we'll think of as compression, divided by T, which will be the period, and that's really the time taken for each successive congestion, time taken for each congestion, each congestion to happen. So we can put that down, just put down congestion here. And from that information, we can work out the speed of it. So therefore, if we flag up the speeds on a gantry, that will be really the maximum speed. Because if the cars go any bigger than that speed, they'll all crush together and you'll get a bigger congestion. If they travel at a speed less than that, then the congestion has time to move away and therefore the traffic keeps flowing. Now, I'll put a link in the description notes where you can find YouTube videos on this about using the wave model to, in fact, model uh, the traffic flow. So what we've got to do from this is just try and say that we can equate the flow of traffic to a longitudinal wave, which has a series of compressions, that's the congestions, and rear fractions, which are times when the cars are all moving. We can work out the distance between these congestions, that would be our wavelength, and we can work out the time taken for each congestion to pass a particular point, that would be the period of this wave, which is moving, in fact, back the way along the traffic. And once we've got that, we've got the speed V, and therefore we can work out the maximum speed which is permissible in order for the traffic to keep flowing uh, without uh, these congestions actually holding up the traffic. Now, this is an example of using your physics knowledge, and my biggest tip for you is to do a lot of research on things like this. Fill your mind with great YouTube videos, uh, books and physics about all these things uh, to augment your higher course. Because when you do that, you're going to be in a much better position to answer these three marker questions. So what I've described there should be enough, if you put it down a logical way, as I've shown you there, to get your free marks for that famous knowledge question.